At Signition, we have taken an interdisciplinary approach towards teaching mathematics, where we have combined knowledge from three disciplines. First, an understanding of how the brain acquires and processes information. The second is pedagogy, or best practices for teaching and learning mathematics. And finally, gameplay design, which deeply integrates the neuroscience and pedagogy. This results in a highly personalized virtual environment that is continuously adaptive for each player in order to maximize their engagement and learning potential. This presentation will overview the neuroscientific approach we have incorporated into our game design to optimize mathematical learning. Before we can optimize math learning, the first question we can consider is how does learning occur in the brain? In the brain, learning is represented through associations. Two or more things that were not previously associated with each other become linked together, and this means that learning has occurred. Neurobiologically, a new connection can appear between two or more neurons. A great example of this is the massive amount of learning that happens in the first couple of years of life. You can see that the number of neurons stays the same, but the connections between them increase as new associations are formed between different parts of the brain. However, learning involves more than just encoding. We also need to retrieve this information as quickly as possible when needed, so we need to find ways of strengthening this connection. Integration is also important. Most mathematical learning builds upon previously learned concepts, and you can imagine how useful it would be if a student could quickly recall all of the information they have previously learned on a topic when something new is being added to it during the lesson. Here's an example of how new information could be integrated, but not in a very efficient way. And here's an example of a much more efficient way. As you can see, everything is linked together. So this is encoded as a coherent network, and activation of any of these neurons is likely to activate the rest of the network as well. This is called connectivity, and it is extremely important in determining how quickly and effectively an individual can process information in the brain. The methods that we have used to implement neuroscientific principles in the game include encoding through multiple pathways, integration of encoded information, and strengthening neural connections. So let's see how this applies in the game. If we're interested in learning, we would be looking at the hippocampus, where information is consolidated and memories are created. If a student needs to learn this equation, they can use a direct route from the mental calculation regions of the brain and create a pathway to the hippocampus. Later, when this information is needed again, how well it's recalled depends on how efficiently this pathway can be reactivated. Our goal is to maximize the number of pathways associated with a mathematical concept. So when it needs to be retrieved, it can be done so efficiently and effectively. One way that we can do this is by presenting the same information through different systems in the brain. Fractions are displayed through visual models. In this example, we have a number line and fraction bars, and these are known to be highly effective in teaching fractions. Seeing different ways of visualizing the mathematical information results in the creation of a more diverse network of brain regions that represent the information about a mathematical concept. Fractions in this example. What's important here is that since the different means of presenting the information are processed simultaneously, this information is encoded as an integrated network, the various parts of which become more easily accessible when one node gets activated. In addition to visual models, we also use spatial models to represent the same mathematical concepts to let the students see what these abstract symbolic numbers actually look like in space. This also allows students to visualize fractions in everyday life. An added benefit of this method is that we can reach out to students who are better at learning math when it's represented visually. Next, we have implemented an interactive tutorial that takes students through examples when a new concept is introduced. The purpose of this is to ensure that students learn the sequential steps of solving a problem in an active way, rather than just passively listening or observing. This type of activity recruits pathways in the motor learning circuits of the brain, which can then be integrated with the rest of the network centering around the math concept. 
We also engage students in estimation involving math concepts to increase cortical connectivity with specific regions in the brain involved in estimation and number sense. And of course, both symbolic numerals and non-symbolic representations of quantity are presented simultaneously to establish a more comprehensive network in the brain. We discussed how this game was designed to present information through different pathways and systems in the brain. Now we will discuss additional methods that we have implemented to better integrate and strengthen this information that's stored in the various parts of the brain. We take advantage of the role that executive functions play in integrating relevant information from various parts of the brain. Success in this game depends largely on how well we can strategize. This involves a number of executive or frontal lobe functions, including organizing thoughts, planning ahead, considering multiple possibilities and their respective probabilities while incorporating all the available information, as well as reasoning and decision-making. These functions have established pathways in the brain where information from various sources relevant to the are simultaneously recruited. This in turn would increase the likelihood that the various pieces of information would be stored as a coherent unit. The more connected these pathways are, the more likely that the various parts will be activated when one part of the system is activated. For example, the next time a student crosses the symbolic representation of a fraction, it's likely that the entire system of stored information would become activated and primed in the brain. You can imagine all the benefits this would have, not only for better understanding the information that's to be presented, but also any new information that will be integrated with this recalled information. Once an association has been formed between two neurons, transmission of information depends on the efficiency of that connection. An obvious way to strengthen this is practice. In other words, the more often this link is activated, the stronger it becomes. But we can also take shortcuts. This can happen if certain neurochemicals are present when this link is activated. For example, you may have heard of dopamine. This is a neurochemical that makes a very significant contribution towards enhancing and strengthening learned information. In this game, we have carefully implemented a number of elements that can increase the release of neurochemicals that specifically contribute to enhancing learning. For example, certain states such as attentional arousal or salience provide shortcuts towards strengthening learned information, as long as the state and the information are carefully paired together. In the example here, we have weed fights. These are intense moments of immediate danger where you could win or lose the battle with some element of skill and some element of chance involved. Similarly, emotional arousal is also highly effective in modifying the way that information is encoded and retrieved. In this example, emotions are manipulated through a desire to protect your investments in the farm and accomplishments. A well-established method of releasing dopamine is through extrinsic rewards, and various types of rewards and reinforcements have been used throughout the game and paired with moments of conceptual learning or aha moments. Finally, intrinsic motivation has also been linked with improved encoding of information. We increase the likelihood of getting students intrinsically motivated by carefully implementing elements that can increase flow. For example, matching a player's ability through adaptive algorithms, as well as a cumulative display of accomplishments of various types throughout creative outlets. This is a building game where small accomplishments contribute to building unique landscapes and cities that allow the player to display creativity in a way that they may not otherwise get to do in math class. To summarize, our goal at Signition is to go beyond just teaching math skills. We also focus on preparing the brain for further mathematical learning by exercising the connections between various systems in the brain that are required to process a range of simple to complex mathematical information. Our carefully designed methods are aimed at enhancing connectivity between various systems of the brain. And this can allow students to process mathematical information more efficiently and effectively.